We got the bracket reset. We're going into the finals here. It's best of five, Halo 3, and we're keying off with Guardian. The question is, is are the teams that won the same game types in the previous series going to win the same? We saw Optic Gaming. They won Guardian before. Are they going to be able to pull it off? We saw the epic ending over towards top blue. Similar start here as you see Fantasy coming in with the shots. Flame a little upset. He had that player weak a little bit with the grenade, but when it's all said and done in the grand scheme of things, you get that camouflage. Not the end of the world here for Optic Gaming. Ooh, and it looks like uh, Roy was spotted out a little bit, but then Gabriel quickly lost sight of him. Roy wisely backing down, not moving. When you start moving, that's when camo gets spotted really easily. That's why you'll see players sit there, crouch. He had a little bit of uh, you know map elevation to help protect him as well. Also, the background of where you are currently standing has a huge influence on that. So if you're top center and you're kind of sitting on one of these light posts or something like that, your camo's not going to really show if you're in an area where you have a really bright background oh nice trade coming in from both players Roy wishes he had that one back he could have secured sniper and more possibly challenged to kill Gabriel or ran away for help from flame sword flame sword has to get aggressive here in my opinion you have that shot on that player yes he does have the mauler but you should be able to come up and hit a couple of shots right there Roy had a different plan though he slow plays that on over towards top gold so push coming in Roy with the shots right there flame he gets taken out. Nice job from Gabriel, keeping composure, keeping control of this snipe side of the map. And very strong opening start here. The only kill comes in from a trade. Now, luckily for Rory in that trade, he did run out of camo, so it's not worst case scenario. I would trade Mahler for Sniper, especially when they have control. They're together on Sniper side of the map. Oh, on Flame, he really needs to connect on these shots, finish off that kill. There's no long range weapon. So that Mauler is not able to be used either. It's still down uh, in the bottom of the map. Fantasy's 1v1 against Flamesword already this game. And what a spawn coming out for Gabriel here. They get sandwiched bottom middle, and that's a heartbreaking one time. I know that Flame didn't have enough shields to pull this play off, but one of my favorite plays in that instance is to juke like you're going to go bottom gold. As that player drops back down, you back up and assassinate that player. It's a really, really tricky play, but nine to three right here. Optic Gaming dropping left and right, camouflage popping up. You can see both teams going for that one. Flame, he's gonna be a little late to the party. Grenade coming in, is he gonna be able to get this player weak? No, smart play from Gabriel, backing off, waiting for those grenades to explode. And Fantasy coming in with the cleanup. Spawning bottom green, not ideal right here. Hopefully they could have spawned on over towards the snipe side. And that's what happens. He rotates on over to green, chokes those spawns. So now you got to watch out for Flame. You know Roy's over there weak. Fantasy taking that kill down. Flame charging on over towards top center. Probably should have stayed on over towards the snipe oh. side because he spawns Roy over towards bottom green. Worst case scenario. And not only that, new sniper was coming up as well. That was literally the last thing you wanted to see happen here. A little bit of maybe desperation setting in when you're down by this much. You just want to get some of those skills so badly. It backfires horribly, not only for himself, but for Roy coming out spawn bottom green it's not where you want to put your teammate i believe this was the map that we saw the 18 to 10 lead fizzle away though and this is what i was talking about with that top gold area see how you can jump over that and you have those little slits on the side to kind of cover your head that's exactly what roy does right there gonna have to probably slow play this one in my opinion wait for this next camo you have that sniper over towards the elbow if you're fantasy exactly where you want to be you can watch so many angles from this yeah, you don't have many opportunities to get away, but if your player on your team stays on over towards the snipe side, you can literally just bait these players out towards bottom center and top center. Should be easy kills here, but exactly what you want to do if you're Optic Gaming, like we talked about it. Wait for this camouflage. No reason to give up any stupid deaths. You have a lot to make up here, and there's no way that you can't do that with some sort of an advantage. Ooh, and I mean, good news for Optic is those two guys are spread out very far across the map. Fantasy in no position, in no way, shape, or form, able to help out his teammate, and Roy comes out ahead. These are the situations Roy likes to find himself in, those 1v1s, and with his new camo getting ready to pop as well. GMS, they're forced to just reset and not push over to try to contest it. I love having that sniper, especially over here towards green. You can connect on these headshots as they try to grab it, but we've seen time and time again on that first Guardian Flame Sword able to put his head down, grab that, and escape. A little too early right there if you're Fantasy on the grenades. You want to save those, but he makes up for it with a nasty no scope. Are you kidding me? Double kill for Fantasy with the nasty snipe on over. Oh, man, could have lined up a overkill. Are you kidding me? This yep. guy is I'll impressing that right two now. Two for one headshots over. What? Well, like just, just Hon do it. Honestly, he chokes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Great snipe right there on Roy. 17 to five. Not the start that you were looking for for Ox Gaming, and not what you were expecting after that amazing game five that we just saw. Great grenade coming in from Roy. 
ending that ridiculous spree from fantasy. Yeah, and they need to get this kill here and they need to stay alive. And sure enough, they will. This is the last chance. You need to have some breathing room uh, when you're down by this much to still come in. There's a lot of time left to play, so at least that's going in Optic Gaming's favor when you're down by this kind of deficit. And luckily, this is in game five. The racket's already been reset. We're back into game number one here. 17 to seven, Tom. Like, what do you think they should do? Where do you want to see them set up? I just want to point out that any time that Optic Gaming has had an opportunity to be out over towards the snipe side, they threw it away, specifically when Flame Sword spawned over there yep. and charged over towards green. Why is this game the way that it is? Just look at where the players on GMS have been located. Ooh. They've been on over towards the snipe side. So now we're finally going to see Optic Gaming with control here, and we'll see what GMS is going to do to try to retake it, because we haven't seen Optic Gaming with one successful push right there. Yeah, they had control at the very end right here, but they haven't been able to maintain anything. They haven't been able to force any setups, any breaks, but 18 to 10 was the previous comeback. 17 to 9 right here. That seems like a pretty similar score. It is a very similar score here. Uh, and then new camo is going to be the next point of contestant for contestant for both of these teams. Uh, Roy, he got multiple unanswered kills on Gabriel when Fantasy was just moving around the map trying to get in position. That's why we're seeing this actually be a game again right now. But it is Gabriel and crew that are set up here for this camo. I'd like. What do you What do you want to see Roy do here with that sniper? I want to see Roy do what Roy does. I want to see him pick up kills and basically there it is where was his up, teammate i don't know he was getting baited basically he was absolutely <laughs> getting baited you there. gotta help your teammate in that instance you have to go top gold with him and lay down shots on over towards that snipe player or you go over to where roy's at right now and jump up and down and put shots onto the lift or you lift over and distract that's your opportunity right there if you're gms nice little strong side move coming in roy gonna miss the head right there lands the body shot but what I want to see is basically what Flame Sword did in the previous series. He went on a killing frenzy, and this is the opportunity for Roy to shine. There's the killing spree coming in. He's going to challenge. He's feeling it. Spots the elbow right elbow. there. And there it is. You got to pull those elbows in. Oh, what a spawn. Oh, and the hands go off. No, that's so unfortunate. Wow, what a spawn coming in from Fantasy. Gets that top gold area, lands the back smack. You do have a pretty fortunate spawn over towards bottom blue side here. If you have Gabriel coming in, this could get ugly. Yeah, 21 was... to 12 here. You cannot afford to die. If you're Flame, you have to get these weapons out of his hands. The Mauler has a couple of shots left in it. The Sniper is completely empty. Still completely feasible comeback right there, but a weird challenge coming in from Flame Sword, and he's going to get cleaned up. Gabriel coming in with the spawn. Team, Team Nade. Nade coming in. But you know what? Great play from Fantasy to make his rotation on over towards the snipe side. Why? Because he has the Mauler, too. He's also choking spawns. Yeah, I mean, and at this point, you just want to trade out kills, uh, you know, and ride it out. That new sniper comes up. Uh, Fantasy, that was perfect rotation. That was the exact opposite from what we were seeing from Optic Gaming earlier, running away from the sniper when it's coming up of, of spawn there. Uh, yeah, luckily, they don't get taken out. No no scopes connecting there like we saw some in the first series for this team. But 23 to 14, this one is out of hand. It's a little out of reach because of the positioning right now. And just the way that these guys have been able to play with the weapons, you can see just going back on over towards the elbow. Again, so many different angles that you could take from here. You have the guy that can potentially lift up. You have a guy potentially coming in over towards top blue. And that's a very common strategy for people to do, to try to lift over one guy or try to lift over two guys and then send another guy on over towards top center. So there's the rotation on over towards the snipe side. Nice melee coming in. Flame Sword going to get the cleanup, but one more kill to go. Has that Mauler, should be able to clean this one up. Instead, just waiting for his teammate to come in. Roy with the shots, cannot challenge this one. He does challenge, gets taken out. Very unfortunate right there for Optic Gaming that they could not get on over towards the snipe side and maintain it. They never had Mauler. They never had Sniper. When they did, Fantasy with that top gold spawn really shut it down. And it has to be frustrating right there. Roy, you can see reading his lips, he spawned right there. Super tough to deal with, but that's just the nature of 2v2. You have so many different places that you can spawn. You have to be aware of that. Maybe, you know, if he doesn't lift up right there again, that player doesn't hear the lift, for example. You cannot be lazy in these instances. Mm -hmm. If you're bottom gold, do the bottom gold to top gold jump right off that lip. We know he's playing bumper jumper. We know how many times he's done that jump. You have to look for something like that because going up the lift is seriously the easiest kill in the finals. I mean, I remember Halo 3. You're, where your enemy team uh, dies influences their spawn on the next life. And I think that's what we saw there. He kills that was two the play, players though. that snipe. That was the play right there that was a big turning point yeah. to not have the sniper rifle control to go in over 
forcing Roy to spawn over towards green. Big kills right there coming in from Fantasy. And you can see Roy had it going on too. This was the elbow shot. This was their opportunity. But as soon as he got that second kill, he lifts right on up a little, you know, a little cocky, really, because they could spawn over towards the barrels. They could mm -hmm. spawn over towards top blue. They know these spawns very well. He's probably anticipating a bottom green spawn, maybe a sniper rifle spawn. But hey, like you said, they died on over towards the snipe side. It influences that. Maybe they, you know, had bottom green blocked. I'm not sure if Flame was on over there. Maybe Flame was just about to spawn there. But that's how the game works. You have to be prepared for worst case scenario spawns, especially when you're down, especially when you're in the finals, and when you have the weapons. I mean, we saw it earlier too. How many uh, times people are able to come off spawn and finish off some of those kills? They're getting in position so quickly, and uh, that Guardian was just one that definitely Opti Gaming needs to let go, needs to forget about, and refocus here in this game because they've already finding themselves down the overshield. They've got that kill lead, but where are they going to rotate on the map? Are they going to be able to repeat and take that victory? We've already seen some of the maps here are now flipping sides from what we saw in that first series. I like this play from Gabriel just to try to gather information with Fantasy. At the same time, I want to see them push together like they have been. They were extremely aggressive in the previous pit. It caught them off guard a couple of times on the Optic Gaming side. This is the opportunity to do it when you have that overshoot. You don't want that to tick away for free. You want to try to gather some sort of information for your teammate fantasy. You're going to take out Roy right there. I believe that was a sniper versus sniper battle. So you're going to see Gabriel again trying to find out where these spawns are. Doesn't see anybody popping up right there. It's going to be Flame Sword with the rockets. The spawn coming in over towards the needle pit. Great teamwork coming in from Optic Gaming. That was the priority kill. Now they're trying to find the next priority. It's Fantasy with the sniper down towards Ovi. And I like this play here. Just wisely backing down, going on a rotation here. And this is a hard one to sniff out unless you know uh, very well who you're playing against. Like this is something I expect from Neighbor uh, and then they did. And a few of those players that really kind of go for those big, high risk, high reward plays here. But luckily for Optic Gaming, they did that find out where he is located and they do have two players right around the snipe tower i think they're trying to find out where gabriel is before they engage rockets coming in flame sword taking out gabriel the no scope coming in roy should be able to clean this kill up and he does gonna be able to i believe grab that sniper rifle and stack the ammo so roy with tons of sniper rifle bullets right here let's hop on board with him 17 shots total you can see how focused he is in this game because what they need to focus on now is in the next 15 seconds, we're going to see that overshoot come up once again. So we've seen them time and time again. They've actually made a few mistakes when they double upped in Sword, but now they've got the position they want to be in. They've got Flame Sword on the street there. they got Roy backing him up. But Flame, he's got to be careful. He's out there on his own. He doesn't have enough help yet. He needs to come back for this overshield and help out Roy. That burn comes in. Roy's got no chance. He's got that invulnerability there. And then Flame Sword dies out on his own. That is another... You know, I'm going to say it is a mistake there. You don't want to leave your teammate out to dry in a 2v1 situation. Not only is that a two kill swing for GMS, now a three kill swing. That's, again, two kills that potentially could have went in Optic Gaming's favor. Really, that's a five kill swing when you add all those up. I mean, we're looking at potentially a seven to eight to one or two game here. Instead, it's a one kill game with control in the hands of GMS. You can see. Easy kill right there for, on Flame Sword for Fantasy. Now they're just going to bait and switch on over towards Roy. Spawns them on over towards the courtyard. Easy snipe right there for Fantasy. Great use of teamwork here coming in from GMS. Yeah, I mean, and they looked so primed to start this one off, and now they're just getting punished. And Roy had so much snipe ammo when he turned that over at overshield. Uh, they didn't get that first overshield, and it really oh. bit them. And now with Rockets again, just not being able to put these to use. Seven to five. Uh, this one is not looking as good as that first series that we saw. But the comeback's possible. We know that for sure. And new snipers are up once again. So you can see they are just hanging out, being as far back on the map as they possibly can, making sure no rockets are going to connect. The, long, the further you are away, obviously the less impactful rockets can be before it gets that sniper rifle. Yeah, I'd like to see him just go up S2 again. And that's where we saw him find so much success and build that early lead in this game. No doubt about it, because we know that Gabriel and Fantasy are going to play aggressive. And one of the best things that you can do right there to counteract that is either push with them or just meet them at your base and just wait for them to push on over towards the long haul. Green hall, easy snipes right there, work with Flame. But honestly, Kyle, it really comes down to what I think is the third, best, uh, third big communication error and teamwork error that we've seen from Optic Gaming. We didn't see it in the tail end of last series, but Flame Sword not, ooh, with the nice little no scope right there, ending Fantasy Spree, but they have overshield. to work on this overshield right now. They didn't work on the previous one. Roy's <gasps> gonna be there. 
And he doesn't he get the beat it down. Again, I think. On to Gabriel. Gabriel with another burn right there. Flame Sword counting on his teammate to get the kill right there. But honestly, you guys got to both go down over towards that overshield. Maybe even sacrifice that runway position to go on over towards under bridge. You can tell. GMS really values that overshield. That's your opportunity to bait it and get kills. Yeah, you only have two shots left in that sniper. You just killed the other player. Overshield is the only thing you need to be worrying about right now. Your teammates there fighting, and the only reason he dies is because he's fighting somebody that is literally invincible for two seconds, but probably, you know, virtually no shields here. So that was another missed opportunity. I think they actually are lucky that they only find themselves down one kill right now, because this could be in a much worse position, like we've said in previous games. I want to see how the communication between Flame and Roy are, especially because we saw them with the Astro listening on Heretic, and they had very fast communication, but we know how slow-paced the previous pit was. It didn't even go to 25, it went to the time limit. So let's hear about what these guys are talking about. Let's hop into an Astro listening. 35 seconds, we have to set up. All right, I'm going back for them then. No, 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 stay here, bro, I'm here. Okay, I'm okay, here. okay, where'd you see him? I don't see anyone. I'm going. They're, they're neither, they're neither. And they're cut sniping, they're cut sniping. Hey, I'm on him, I'm on him. trying to challenge him, challenge him for a second. And long haul sniping as well. They're flag weak, Mike. Remember, they're, they're flag sniping too. Watch out, they're flag. And then long haul, long haul sniping. It's gonna be flat, maybe, Mike? Nope, nope, nope. You're still in there. Nice. Know. Probably went through long haul. Probably went through. Rockets, Mike. Watch court. Nice. Got court, baby. I don't see anything court. All right, I'm coming around cuts. Where you? What time is rockets? I don't know. They're nading it. They're nading it. I'm on their side. Lift, lift, lift. Might be long haul. On me, on me. I'm trying no to. No help, no help. Oh, you might run out of training. I don't know what it is. Overshield, overshield's like a. It's on me. They last, they last, they last, they last, they last. Better! They last, they last. Watch me. Nope. Oh. Nice, Mike. Last. I got full OS. I'm going runway. Just live. Go no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, just live. Port's clear. Watch their cuts. Their cuts, background, background. Got one. Top turret, top turret, this should be a dude. He's there. He's hiding on the pocket. He's back. Still back him. Still back him. I'm leaving that guy. I'll leave you. Find the green one shot. Watch out the green. Right. Watch out the green. Run away, run away, run away, yep, yep, yep. run away. S1, S1, S1. Saw that dude, right? Yep. Still there. He's still there. If you could rockets, worst nice spawns. Is he he's there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh the green one shot. No, no, no. Stay in green, in green. Watch our green. Yep, yep. He's back to their green. And what's on their sword? Name? Five minutes remaining. And you can hear from Roy yelling better as he finally missed out on the first two, but the third time's a charm, Tom. He wins that overshield battle. He does get stuck and taken out, but that 13 to 10, from what I've seen so far this game, I would not expect a lead to be in Opti Gaming's favor, but some clutch sniper shots from them has really paid off dividends. And Roy, I mean, Flame Sword, even though he just died and shot himself with the rocket, was that was the that. play. Exactly. Yeah, he, he was wasting the rocket. He was rocket. wasting the rocket. That wasn't like some sort of choke or anything like that. Flame, actually, a very smart heads up play, but wow, what a snipe coming in from Fantasy, just peeling Roy's dome. That was his last shot as well. He's going to go pick up the new ammo. One of the things to point out in the callouts that, while as amazing as they were coming in from Roy and Flame, I think that they're lacking in calling out the name of the opposing player. After a best of five that you played, after playing against these guys probably online, you should know what certain players' tendencies are. So maybe if you know Gabriel's S1 compared to Fantasy S1, what that potential player may do. So I think that that's one opportunity that they could clean up on to try to make this a little bit easier for them. You're absolutely right, Tom, because it's hard to do in fours, uh, but it is beneficial even then, and it is so much easier to do it in twos with the pace of the game. No doubt about it. I mean, you could say one shot their green box and the other guy is over towards S1, but when you get that extra information that it's fantasy and you put your reticle over that guy and you know that it's fantasy's head, it's just so automatic for you to connect on that shot. Roy, great job right there pecking that player. You could see Gabriel and Fantasy trying to put pressure on that overshield, but it's going to be Flame Sword there with the burn. But hey, they've been not getting the last couple ones anyway. So another close game here called 13 to 13. Are you kidding me? Three minutes left. No way this one goes to 25 either. And just to add on to what you were saying, Tom, about the player names, like when one player has a sniper and everyone knows that, sometimes after a long standoff, people can rotate. So when you're calling out that location again, you're automatically giving that information of where the player with the power weapons are. So it goes a lot more than just, you know, I got this guy or that guy. Wow, again, an aggressive play coming in from Gabriel. 
And this is what we were talking about. If you're off to gaming, you could really punish people for their aggression on Pit. Pit is one of those maps where there's only X amount of lanes. Yes, you don't have four players to watch the four or five lanes that are coming in, but at the same time, you don't have to worry about so many players pushing too. So you can see Gabriel and Fantasy again. They're not slowing down. A push down towards the long haul. Flamesword gonna lose that battle on over towards Gabriel. And if they do not find Roy with the sniper rifle here, that's gonna have enough time for Mike, for Flame, to come back and respawn. That's exactly what happens. Fantasy gonna trade his teammate's life for the Rockets. I don't think that's that bad of a trade. Yeah, I mean, that definitely can go either way. We'll find out if it pays off or not as the next few uh, kills go either team's way. But that was a really good job. Roy is able to stay alive. Uh, you know, his Dipsy Doodle strong side away into the Mauler was impressive enough as it is because he was taking absolutely no shields and was not in a great position to be able to escape when a player flanks through the long haul there. So now we see, I think it's going to be the overshield is the next thing these guys need to worry about here. Yep. 16 to 15, less than two minutes. This is very similar to what we saw in that last Game. This is what it comes down to is, is Fantasy going to get picked off with the Rockets? He basically has two opportunities. He can go over, over towards the Overshield side, and he can kind of do what he's doing right now, just bait that with the Rockets over there and hope that one of those connects. Or maybe he takes out his BR and just kind of pecks the player as he goes on over towards the Overshield. This is the other option that he had. Push on over towards the green box. But Roy sniffing him out, realizing what's going on. And there's the, the pickup from Flame Sword. Not enough pressure from GMS. Optic Gaming now with a huge advantage. 17 to 15, but the snipes coming in. No more overshield for Flame. Yeah, I mean, that that's a hard one. But at least you didn't give up that death. You still have a two-kill lead. Both of you need to be taken out for that one to be tied up. Roy is in an individual fight over there towards the sniper side of the map. Flames coming in to help with the collapse. Gabriel should be taken out here. And great job, Roy. Doesn't want to risk being taken out. Doesn't want anything to happen. And wisely backs out and waits for help. That That is another distinguishing factor between a good and a great player. A good player might have lifted up there thinking, yes, my teammate's going to finish off this kill and I'll just grab his sniper rifle. But he does not want to take any chances. These trades are so important for Optic Gaming right there. I mean, if you don't get that trade, you're looking at a two kill, possibly a one kill game. Now Gabriel trades out Roy right there. Two kills to make up in a matter of 35 seconds. You have three rockets right here. It's going to have to come down to fantasy finding Flame Sword. Flame Sword most likely bounced out of there. There, I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't hiding inside that sword area or potentially made his way on over towards back snipe. And there he is, Flame Sword, staying alive, playing it smart. They know that at this point, they could even die and most likely try to get into another fight off of the spawn and still be in a really good position. Instead, Fantasy <gasps> has to make it up. The rocket comes in onto Flame. Yeah, they have to spot where Roy is, most likely in the Mauler. But you have to be careful that you don't spawn your teammate over there either because he does have rockets over there. Roy with the Mauler, no! not going to find him. And that's exactly what happens. Fantasy coming in with the double kill. Played it so slow if you're Optic Gaming right there. Tried to run out the time, but you have to know the spawns. You have to know the situation. 2-0 now for GMS. I saw that happening, Tom. I know you did as well. We're looking at each other. 10, 12 seconds left, and your teammate gets taken out. Respawns are so fast in Halo 3. It's better just to go out there and challenge it for Roy yep. and get that spawn on over towards the courtyard side. The only way that you're going to lose that is if the rocket guy comes in, and you got to give it to Fantasy. I thought that he was thrown away by charging at the 14-second mark. It's a fabulous rocket on over towards Flame Sword. They know that Roy's looking over towards that flag side. Well, He's not there. Guess where he's going to be? He wasn't courtyard. He wasn't S1. He's hiding in his molar. You tried to pull it out right there for Optic Gaming. You had the overshield. You had a two kill lead. The snipes on Flame Sword when he was weak. The trades and kills coming in. Just not enough firepower at the end of the game for Optic Gaming. Now they have to win three games in a row. Totally possible with the way that these guys are playing and the experience that they have. But wow, I feel like they let a big opportunity slip away in this I, game. I mean, I can't even believe with some of the things we're seeing that the games are this close. They've had uh, some brutal overshields they got punished for in that game and, and that rocket. Flames are charging up to a snipe tower. He got red like a book and finished off there. And then this play is one that's going to haunt them because I know... Why are they both looking in the same spot? <sighs> Why are they on the top of each other's heads? Say that I'm watching flag side. The other guy, all he has to do is body block on over towards the needle side. There's no way that that rocket connects on both of them. They most likely get a trade right there, and then they either tie the game or they exactly. win the game. They had miscommunication four times in this series now, and it's cost them heavily every single time. I mean, I don't think we can say out loud what we used to call that when you get rocketed like that, but that was the only way you can lose that game. They were making out. The only way you can lose that game is if you're standing on top of each other's head and a rocket guy pushes in the Mahler. That's true. That's true. So we'll see what happens here.
We know the aggression came out from Fantasy and Gabriel in the previous Heretic game. They had great pink control. They're flying together. What are you going to do right here if you're Flame and Roy? You have to play out of your minds. You cannot make wow. any mistakes. Yeah, and that was a great shot from Fantasy to pick up that kill. I think a one bullet of that burst actually connected there. But this is what you need to see. Roy and Flame, they need this map, honestly, to get back into this. They need no power weapons and just get their confidence back. One of the things to point out is this is when you're going to see what Flame and Roy are really made of. If Gabriel and Fantasy think that this is going to be any easier, even though you just saw some great shots coming in and a nice little two-kill lead for GMS, when you're going against great players, this is when they really tend to show up, when their back's against the wall fully here. Flame Sword getting predicted with those two plasma grenades. Now Roy, he's going to be singled out on over towards the side base. But you cannot ease up here. You have to play how you've played in the previous series, how you've played this entire tournament. Don't think that you have this in the bag if you're GMS. Yeah, and Flame Sword, he dies twice over there towards P-side. And now a four kill lead within just the first minute of this game here. They need to slow it down. Oh. Wow, Whoa. what a stick. Flame coming off the spawn. Also, it's that's gonna land. Those names. Yeah, he's gonna land that one onto Gabriel Ooh. as well. And Roy with the assassination. He's gonna challenge this one as well. <laughs> Borg, Borg, Borg. <laughs> Looking really strong on over towards the P side. Trapping these players out in front of the base. They're stuck on over towards red one. Fantasy, he gets stuck as well. Look out for that grenade. If you're Roy, that's exactly what he does. Looking for the spawns. Flame pops up over there. Very rarely will they spawn under that base if flame pops up there. So most likely on over towards the blue side. You can see Gabriel throwing the grenades. That's going to give up their position. The other player, Fantasy, makes his way on over towards the car side. And I like this play. I think that it's really important to get crossfire going on in these type of situations so you can go and try to push over towards top center. That's exactly what Fantasy did. Great play coming in from GMS. Wow, Roy wanted to get a peak shot going on in that situation. And the player top mid, he knew he was going to get collapsed on. There's no escape routes when someone's top center and you're trapped at that angle, especially if they have a plasma grenade to come in and essentially flush you out. Unfortunately, did not work out at all. Fantasy connects perfectly on all those shots. Yeah, and one of the things to do if you know that the players are in pink side you have a very very low risk high reward play by going into your own car bubble right there you have so much cover you can challenge and peek as much as you want and if that's the case just wait for the other team to make a mistake and then capitalize on that you have the communication right now if you're flame and if you're roy but wow what another close game that we have here 11 to 10 nice job from optic gaming to make a little bit of a comeback but this is starting to remind me a little bit of Guardian where they didn't have pink control or they didn't have snipe control and now you can see GMS controlling pink area. Everybody knows in this map that that's where you want to be. And I got to say this once in that pit game, that comeback and that kill reminds me a lot of something that happened to Clutch on a pit game. Comeback. I think they were up by 10, two minutes left, doesn't triggers down, come back and spawn kill him twice in a row to win the game. Well, he's never been known for a shot. <laughs> so I'm not sure what really happened there, but uh, you know, one thing's for sure. The highlight of his career was an 18 and 9 performance. We'll never forget that. We'll always cherish that clutch. We'll always cherish that. And you can see Roy, he, he's, he's so confident right now. He's someone that is never going to give up no matter what situation he finds himself in, no matter how big of a hill he needs to climb. You can see the focus on it in his eyes right now as they focus, as they pay attention to this and want to make sure they can get everything going. And you can see such uh, uh, effective right. screen watching going yeah. on. Years of practicing next to his brother. Of course, twin brother Lunchbox. I'm sure he's at home watching as well, rooting for Roy to come out victorious here. This is exactly what I'm talking about when it's crunch time. We're looking at a 13 to 12 game right here, perfectly in the mid game. If you don't do it right now in your optic gaming, it's going to get very difficult because GMS is going to taste victory. But if you start getting aggressive, they're going to start shaking a little bit. Clutch was talking about how they were sweating a little bit during the winner's finals. So if you put that pressure on, you never know how they're going to respond. Fantasy coming in with a nice trade right there, but Roy going to be able to pick that one off. And the way Roy's challenging, I'm not sure that he's going to lose that fight. Yeah, I was going to say, as long as you're trading out right now as Flame Sword, you're sitting in a pretty good position because, you know, eight out of ten times, Roy's going to win the following battle as long as he's full shield going into that uh, BR fight here. And that's exactly what we just saw him do. And this is the most aggressive that we've seen Roy play the entire series. I like to see it. He's screen watching a ton. He's feeling himself. He really wants to go and try to impose his will with his shot. Unfortunate for Flame Sword oh. right there. A little body disrespect. You know what? I don't like that if you're Gabriel. That is a horrible decision. The last thing that you want to do is try to get one of these guys pumped up. You do have the sword going in in the hands of Fantasy. He's going to be able to take out Flame right there. But I'll tell you what, if I'm Flame, I'm looking for Gabriel. I'm looking for blood. I'm not even going to shoot his body. I'm just going to do 
let my play do the talking because you know what? You haven't won a tournament yet, bro. You have no reason to be shooting bodies. <laughs> you, you say right now, but when you're up 2-0 and you have a lead in the game number three to close out the series, God forbid for these guys right now, if they have any comeback and Optigame comes and takes this series, I will post that on your Twitter every single day for as long as you continue to play the game. Oh, wow. Kyle, going Well, not me personally, but oh, blame, blame. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, Kyle, going I don't on, have on. that much time on my head. Yeah, whew, a lot of time. Forever and ever. Infinite amount of posts, but... <laughs> 18 to 17 here again. I'm looking at Roy. I think Roy's going to be the X factor here. We saw Flame do it in the previous series. Roy's been chomping at the bits. I don't think he's played nearly the series that he's wanted to play so far. And this is his time to prove it. He's known as having the best shot. He knows that he is a scrape PR. The sword flying in over towards P2. Good trade coming in there if you're GMS because now you have sword over towards Pink 2 and Flame's trapped underneath the base. Fantasy over challenging. Interesting grenades coming in from Flame Sword. He realizes Gabriel's right behind him. Big fight going on over towards the side base of melee. What? That is just worst case scenario because not only is that player going to live, build a two kill lead. Luckily, time's not going to be the big factor here. It looks like it will go to 25 kills. You see that more often on the Heretic map. They have eyes on both players. They know their piece side of the map, but they've got those frag grenades. They're looking to just get damage. And, and if you're GMS now, you're sitting in perfect position to take this entire tournament. You just got to stay alive. Maybe pick up one or two more kills here. Just trade it out. Flame has to stay composed here. You cannot worry about what happened with that melee on over towards the pink side. The way that Roy's playing this one, I would honestly just stay alive if you're Flame and bank on Roy getting the kills. I think that Roy is playing out of his mind right now. He has that do not lose mentality. He seems so much more confident in the way that he's moving around right now compared to the other players. Flame gonna get that kill onto Fantasy. Now Roy has to fly in with the help, has the shot onto Gabriel. Not able to get the finish. Fantasy also spawns there. That's also gonna get the sword on over to them as well. Good kill coming in, great prediction. From the angles, there's the bait and switch coming in with Roy. Nice job from Flame Sword finishing that kill off. He does have the sword right there if he wants it, but instead, gonna throw grenades on over towards the red side of the base. Five That's also gonna give spawns on over to Fantasy, so he knows both those players are there. Shocked that he doesn't pick up the frag grenades. The flank coming in. Fantasy, he's gonna die. Gabriel gets the trade on over to Flame Sword. Oh my gosh, Kyle, this is intense. This is, I am so nervous watching this unfold, Tom. He's 22 to 22. It's going to go the distance. So much time left on this clock. I think it's the most time we've had in, in this position here so far. And Roy, he knows he's got to play a car side of the base. Nobody wants to make that first move here, be the aggressor, you know, get stuck in a poor position. Ooh, little little whirlwind coming in from Gabriel, not able to land that shot. Roy's gonna make his way on over towards the Eli. Now you have a nice flank coming in. I like this aggression coming in, but he doesn't have any grenades to defend himself. Roy with the shots. Nice shots from Gabriel though, both players back and down. Flame Sword flying out, needs to connect. You do have Fantasy helping out over towards the car side. Where's Roy gonna be? You know the communication coming in tight for both teams, but you're down low right now. If you're GMS, you gotta get up top. Someone has to hit that lift. Someone has to push out either pink side or hit that lift, and that's exactly what they do. They both hit the lift. Smart play coming in from GMS. Yeah, that was a fantastic job between GMS to stay alive in that position. They were getting trapped. They were getting sandwiched. One of them was out in the open of the map, and it's actually going to be Gabriel that grabs this kill onto Flamesword. Now Roy being top center is oh, completely no. left out to dry. That was the game oh. right there. That was the game. It's so tough right now if you're Optic Gaming to come back from this because all it takes is one stick, one trade. One missed positional error coming out from OG, and GMS is going to take this series. They are up 2-0. to zero. They did get bracket reset previously in game number five, but this is looking like their game to win. It absolutely is. You can't ask for a better position for these guys to find themselves up 2-0 in the series, 24-22 in this game. There's no more mistakes left. We talked about Guardian when it was 17-7. You have a better chance of coming back on that than you do on 24-22 because of just the, you know, the unfortunate factor of one kill and it's over. You have to use these frag grenades if you're fantasy. That's exactly what he does. Roy coming in and getting aggressive. Does he stay alive? He does. Wow, oh great God. job getting over towards P3. Shocked that Gabriel didn't follow that one up. Instead, he's just going to live the fight. Another oh. day, Flame Sword. No, what are you doing? He's trying to stay alive over towards bottom center. Where's the help from Roy? Fantasy charging in. Very unfortunate for Optic Gaming right there, but you cannot take anything away from GMS. They are your Halo 3 MCC champions here at DreamHack Atlanta. Congrats to Fantasy. Congrats to, congrats to Gabriel. You just won your first tournament. Yeah, that was an awesome way to close that one out. A 3-0 fashion after that reset. They got to be feeling good about that. Uh, definitely some unfortunate mistakes coming out of the gaming sides. Uh, a few things go differently 
And those games might not have even been close. You know, what comes to mind initially, you know, the melee. When a game is that close and you have a couple kills that could have gone your way, I mean, it really comes down to, I don't know if it was Gabriel Fantasy, but one of them was able to stay alive in front of the base behind that box and retreat below the base. They both lift up together. Flamesword and Roy get separated a little bit, sandwiched into two 1v1s. And like you said it, Tom, that was the game right then and there. Again, just small mistakes coming in from Opti Gaming, but it was the aggression from GMS. It wasn't expected coming in when they were charging in duos. They were sticking together constantly. Not much cross-shooting going on. Instead, the buddy system, which we did see a lot in Halo 3. A lot of times, two people would stick together, and the other two, a lot of carbon, a lot of triggers.